This year's World Demonia Day will be commemorated amid calls from health advocating and, and uh, on leaders to scale up the fight against the disease, which is the single largest infectious de uh, cause of death in children worldwide. And pneumonia is a form of acute respiratory infection that affects the lungs. It affects uh, children and families everywhere, but uh, deaths are highest in South Asia and Sub-Saharan Africa from the uh, studies that is carrying out, carried out. At this year's theme, Every Breath Counts, is calling on governments with heavy burden of uh, pneumonia and air pollution to commit to reducing air, pollu air pollution related pneumonia deaths by 50 percent by 2030. So that's the crux of our discussion next. I have with me in the studio a consultant pediatrician Dr. Yesside Kimbolagwe here. She is in the studio too. Yesside, you know, nice to have you join me. Thank you for having me. You know, me. there are some Yoruba names that are not every day. You can't pick them off the shelf, like Ade, you know, and all of that. And uh, this, is, this is one of them, but I really love it. It's really interesting. Good to have you join me. Thank you. Now, let's, let's make some clarifications. When it comes to the issue of uh, pneumonia, I recall when growing up, mommy would say, oh, cover yourself so that you don't get pneumonia. So we like pneumonia to be cold, just cold. But talk to us basically, what is pneumonia and what is not pneumonia? Um, thank you um, for the question. Mm. Um, so pneumonia, basically, like you said earlier, mm. is an infection of the lungs, um, which causes um, inflammation, which simply means swelling. Okay. So the um, pipes within the lungs that help us to take air when we're breathing into the lungs gets blocked mm. and um, can easily cause um, difficulty in breathing. Mm. Um, so that is what pneumonia is. What it is not um, is um, exposure to cold because some people think that those symptoms of fever, cough, and difficulty breathing, which you get when you have pneumonia, are caused by cold. They are not. Mm. Um, what causes pneumonia is exposure to germs. So germs like bacteria, viruses, fungi, that is actually what causes pneumonia and mm. not cold. I see. Well, it's good to have that clarification because uh, a lot of people still believe that uh, the moment you, are, you have cold, you could have mm. pneumonia. Mm. But what's the relationship between pneumonia and cold? Um, so what happens is um, sometimes when it's cold, mm. um, some of these viruses, these organisms tend to thrive in the cold. Okay. So when you're exposed to cold, you get exposed to those germs and then you get pneumonia. Mm. Also sometimes when you're breathing cold air, it tends to um, make it easier for these um, germs that we've spoken about mm. to um, penetrate okay. and cause disease. Mm. So that's the relationship. All yeah. right. Now, why are children more susceptible to pneumonia? Um, so children, by virtue of their age, especially children less than five years, um, they have less immunity. Their immune system is not yet well developed and their airways are smaller. Mm. So when they get infections from these germs, um, it tends to cause more problems for them, it tends to cause more obstruction and um, all the complications that you can get from pneumonia are worse at this age. Mm. All right. Now, uh, s since there's a relationship between pneumonia and cold, one would naturally expect that uh, there will be more pneumonia prevalence in, uh, in developed countries where you have uh, winter and all of that. But that is not the case. We have it more in uh, sub-Saharan Africa and, and so on. Where it is tropical, we have some level of heat around here. Mm. Wh why, why is it so? Yes, because there are so many other risk factors. Okay. Um, for instance, um, nutrition. Mm. So you have more cases of malnutrition in developing countries. So malnutrition is, is connected to it somehow. Yes, it's ah. connected to, to it. And also this year's um, theme, talking about the effect of air pollution. Mm. Um, we also have more of the air pollution here um, in terms of exposure to generator fumes. We know the issues we have with um, generation of power in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. um, also, exposure to things like exhaust fumes and um, also indoor um, air pollution. Mm. So from 
cooking with things like firewood, charcoal, and things like that, which are more prevalent in developing countries. So we tend to have more of um, pneumonia. Also, other risk factors like um, lack of immunization. Okay. So some of these um, organisms, these germs we've spoken about, are vaccine preventable. So diseases like pertussis, which is whooping cough, measles. Um, there are some bacteria, streptococcus pneumonia, um, hemophilus influenza. Hmm. So our children are to be immunized against these um, diseases. Hmm. And children in developed countries tend to have a higher coverage, immunization coverage than here. I see. So on a day like this, how best can today be commemorated? Um, so today what we want to do is to spread the word. Mm. We want to spread the word about what causes pneumonia. So we said it's caused by germs. It's not caused by cold. By cold. <laughs> um, so even coronavirus is a cause, is, is a virus that also causes pneumonia. Mm. Um, we also want to talk about the prevention. So we talk about nutrition. Mm. So adequate nutrition starting from birth. So exclusive breastfeeding in the first six months, you know, reduces um, pneumonia by more than 20%. Mm. And also um, after six months, continuing breastfeeding till two years and also having a balanced diet with both, you know, vitamins, minerals, as well as all the other nu uh, nutrients that children should have. Um, also immunization which is free, available in all health centers for children in Nigeria. But for some reason, cultural barriers, um, some people don't know the importance. We also find out that the immunization coverage is very low. So we want to you know, tell parents to make sure that their children get all the immunizations that are available to um, children in Nigeria, which, are, like I said, are free. Hmm. And also to reduce um, air pollution, especially indoor air pol pollution. So things like cigarette smoking indoors, because children can be exposed to secondary or uh, secondhand smoke. Mm. Um, cooking indoors with things like kerosene, you know, firewood and things like that. Keeping the generators close to where the child sleeps. So if we're able to reduce all that, mm. then we'll be able to prevent um, most of the preventable causes of um, pneumonia. All right, the f for adults, uh, do, do they have some level of immunity against uh, pneumonia? Yes, um, adults do have some level of immunity. Okay. So for adults, it's more of the elderly, because okay. as we go older, our immunity also starts to wane. Mm. So pneumonia is more common in the elderly. But then, you know, with the advent of um, the coronavirus, we got to see that, you know, pneumonia can actually affect anybody. And it was pneumonia that was the cause of, you know, so many of the deaths that we had you know, from coronavirus. So um, for adults as well, you know, they can be prone to, to pneumonia. All right. So talk to us about the symptoms of pneumonia. What, what are the visible symptoms that one can see and know, okay, fine, this is pneumonia, this is not fever, this is nothing else, this is pneumonia? Yeah, so usually um, a child with pneumonia would start with having a fever, mm. a runny nose. Um, so at that point, it's still mild. But then when you start seeing the child breathing with a lot of effort, so you start seeing the ribs, the spaces in between the ribs going in, you start seeing the child, you know, finding it difficult you know, to breathe. At that point, then you know that it's be becoming more severe. And usually at that point, it means the child needs to be taken to the hospital quickly and the child may need oxygen for the child mm -hmm. to be able to um, breathe better mm -hmm. and to avoid the child dying. I see. So uh, in a situation where one has, uh, one already has pneumonia, how best can it be managed? Because it, since it's related to cold, uh, a lot of people will say, okay, anything that is cold, when you bring, introduce heat, it goes away. <laughs> and then some people, because we hear people say, okay, go and do some inhalation of, uh, you know, the steam from yes. hot water and things like that. Talk to us about the, the, yes. <laughs> the best practices in managing these yes. So uh, like these I said, um, it ranges from mild to severe. Okay. So for the mild cases, yes, simple things like steam inhalation, if the nose is... Oh, that, that helps? Well, just to relieve the symptoms. So okay. if the nose is okay. blocked for, you know, with catar mm. and things like that, you know, um, fever reducing medication like paracetamol. But by the time, you know, the child, you know, starts coughing and they start having difficulty breathing and all that, then you need to treat the cause. So if it's a bacterial cause, then the child needs antibiotics. And obviously, that means you need to take the child to the hospital to be diagnosed. Mm. And if need be, the child may actually need to have 
um, oxygen or may even need to be on a ventilator if it's quite severe. So pneumonia can actually be very serious. And what we say is don't delay. Take the child to the hospital as soon as possible so mm. the child can get the right um, treatment. All right. How, how long before pneumonia begins to manifest? Because the, the period of time where maybe the, the person, that child or adult, gets the bacteria and when we begin to see the symptoms, what's the, that, that period? Um, it depends. Okay. It depends on the individual. It may go very fast hmm. and it may take a couple of days. Um, so usually, like I said, it will start with just, you know, the runny nose, the fever, hmm. which may be about two to three days. And then, you know, after the child starts getting those very serious symptoms. So hmm. by the time a child is not eating anymore, sleeping too much, is even having a convulsion, hmm. then you know that, you know, it's getting out of hand and you should get uh, proper treatment. Are there other connected, um, th because there's this question for you as to whether pneumonia has a relationship with when someone has gas or some has uh, constipation, you know, things like that. Are they connected somehow in relationship to, to pneumonia? That if you have pneumonia, you could have those? Um, I mean, you could have some gastrointestinal symptoms like vomiting, diarrhea, and things like that because mm. the, these organisms or these germs we're talking about might affect other organs. Okay. So it may not just affect the lungs, it may affect the stomach or the intestines and things like that. So it's possible to have some other associated symptoms mm. with um, pneumonia. And that's why pneumonia is quite serious in children because for them, it quickly becomes a disease that affects the whole body from the lungs. If it's not treated on time, it can you know, spread to the brain, spread to you know, the kidneys, and then you start having kidney failure and things like, well, even heart failure. So, um, and by the time it gets to that level, obviously, we know it's going to be quite difficult to treat. And not everybody has access to um, good health care. So the best thing is to try to nip it in the bud and treat it early at the stage where antibiotics, you know, will be able to, to handle, um, it. handle it. Mm. So, so for, for children who... Because you talked about immunization earlier on. If you're immunized as a child, does it cover you for life? Um, yes and no. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Let's know the difference. <laughs> so mo for most of the vaccines, mm -hmm. you have what you call boosters. Okay. So usually we expect that all children should get the vaccines up to the age of nine months. That's what our national program on immunization covers mm -hmm. um, that you don't have to pay for. But then to have that sustained... Um, coverage, there are boosters we should be taking, you know, at 18 months, five years, even some at adolescence um, age, and even as adults, we are supposed to actually take some booster oh, vaccinations. Really? Yes. So I should take a booster, booster <laughs> for <laughs> pneumonia. I see. That's amazing. All right. Now, when it comes to the the, uh, let's talk about public awareness now, because it's one thing to have the professional knowledge of some of these things is another thing to have a public awareness because some parents don't know these things and so on. Uh, how much, what, what strategies can we imbibe to create more awareness amongst people? Because like they say, or like you all say, prevention is always better than cure. Yes, and that's why, you know, the World Pneumonia Day is being done every year, mm. um, you know, in conjunction with associations like my association, the mm. Pediatric Association of Nigeria. Mm. We have some um, non-governmental organizations like Save the Children International mm -hmm. who have carried this message um, trying to create awareness. So this year, for instance, or every year, we try to do like radio jingles mm. in different languages all over the country. So right now in every state in Nigeria, we're having jingles, mm. you know, for three days during this period, just trying to sensitize um, parents, um, caregivers of children under five on these preventive measures so that, you know, if they breastfeed, um, like I said, exclusive breastfeeding until six months, mm -hmm. immunize their children, try to reduce indoor you know, air pollution, and also give those um, adequate um, nutrition that we've spoken yeah. about, then we'll be able to you know, win this fight against uh, pneumonia. And that's why we're doing this every year. Mm -hmm. And we also do it not only 
you know, once a year, throughout the year, at every contact we have. So when women come for uh, sorry, antenatal care, mm -hmm. when they are pregnant, we start, you know, educating them on how to care for that child when that child is born. Um, in schools, you know, PTA associations, you know, awareness campaigns at the market squares, anywhere where people who have children under five will be mm. trying to carry that message. The, the, fr from your observation and the engagement with people uh, due to the work that you do, are the numbers increasing generally or they're reducing if you compare them to the past few years, the trends? Um, it's, it's, it's reduced a bit, but not as much as we would want it okay. to. So, and that's why we still have to keep advocating. And with the um, COVID-19 pandemic mm, last mm -hmm. year, we had an extra about 2 million you know, deaths from pneumonia because of that. So it somehow slowed down the gains that we had you know, from in this fight. And also with all the lockdowns, you know, a lot of people didn't get to go to the hospital. Hospitals were shut. So mm. children couldn't get their immunizations and all that. So we've had a bit of a setback and we're trying to get back on track now. Mm. Um, and things like air pollution, which were not really considered to be very important, have yeah. been found by studies to be an important um, cause of um, preventable um, you know, deaths from pneumonia. Okay. So we think if all these um, preventive strategies can be sustained, can be strengthened you know, by all governments, um, we'll be able to win the fight against pneumonia. Oh, that's amazing. All right, th we have to leave you here now. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Yesidi Akimbolagbi, uh, consultant pediatrician. Thank you for coming on the program. Thank you for having and me. And thank you for what you do in the society as well. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> right. Now, we we're talking about uh, pneumonia. And today, uh, if you hadn't known, uh, know now that pneumonia is not just cold. It's a bacteria that causes pneumonia. We used to grow up thinking that the moment you're cold, you could just have pneumonia.